Our first guest tonight is a legendary Academy Award and Emmy-winning actress and activist whose new book, What Can I Do? My Path from Climate Despair to Action, is on sale today. Please welcome back to the show, Jane Fonda, everybody. Jane, it is so Hi. lovely to see you again. Good to see you, Seth. I feel for you, man. I can't even imagine what it must be like playing well, in Well, we have made some progress because we spoke in April. I was in an attic then. And so while we're not fully back, we are taking steps in the right direction. Well, you're great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I want to ask, one of the things you talk about in the book is how your activism has changed. Obviously, this is something that you have been, uh, for lack of a better word, active in for a long time. Can you speak to uh, how your activism in the 70s uh, versus the, your activism now is different? Well, as I say in the beginning of the book, in the acknowledgement, you know, when I was young, I thought that um, activism was a, was a sprint. You know, if I just go fast enough, everything can be fixed really quick. And then I got a little older and I realized that it's uh, activism is more like a marathon and I slowed down and learned to pace myself. But now that I'm seriously old, I realize that it's really a relay. It's a relay race. You pass the baton. And um, that's kind of what I did this last fall and winter with Fire Drill Fridays, which is what what this book is about is what I did last year and what I'm doing now virtually. There were a lot of very, very young people who were complaining there weren't enough old people involved in the, in the actions to, to raise awareness of the urgency of the climate crisis. So I said, well, I'm going to answer the call. An aging movie star, I'll bop in there and I'm going to try to make a difference and try to alert people to what's happening. But it was the young people that really um, made the difference and, and, and woke me and a lot of other people up. It must so be it was, rewarding yeah. how people have continued to engage with Fire Drill Fridays, even it's become a virtual event. Has that been something that's been exciting to you as well? It's been unbelievable. I, I, we've been doing it now for six months and Last Friday, we had 750,000 people following us across all platforms. July and August, we had about three and a half million people. And tens of thousands have signed up and are volunteering to register voters and um, get people to vote, get out the vote. Spanish-speaking volunteers work with the Latinx community. And it's just amazing what's happening. I know you obviously would rather be doing it in person than virtually. I guess one of the upsides of doing it virtually is you uh, have not been arrested for civil disobedience in a while because you were really piling up the arrests in recent, uh, in recent months. Uh, I guess, is it five times that you were arrested at Fire Drill Fridays? Is that right? Yes, it is, yeah. And, uh, and you were arrested as well in the 70s, but that was a whole uh, a different story compared to uh, what's happened in sort of recent days. Yes, back in the 70s, Richard Nixon was president, and it was not a voluntary arrest. I, I flew from Canada into Cleveland, Ohio, and they arrested me at the border and took all my vitamin pills and said they were drugs and took all my books and papers and address books. And the guy, the arresting officer, told me he was working from orders from the White House. So that was, that was not so cool. This time, you know, it's different. Engaging in civil disobedience it's not where you start as an activist, but for 40 years, we've been petitioning and, and protesting and marching and writing and, and, and lobbying, and our voices haven't been heard. And so the next step is civil disobedience. And history has shown that civil disobedience is what changes history. Um, so that's what we did, and it got a lot of attention. And that's what, that's what we were trying to do. There are so many people in this country who know there's a climate crisis and know that it's caused by humans and they, they want to do something, but they don't know what. 13 million of them said they would do civil disobedience, but nobody's asked. So we're That's asking. one of the many steps you lay out to people in the form of solutions, because obviously we are told often uh, what a crisis we're in with the climate. Was it important for you in your book to both point out what is going wrong and also ways to correct it, sort of actionable items for, uh, if, yeah. if that's the best way to describe it? 
Absolutely. I mean, if I was asking before I went to DC, what can I do? I knew that millions of other people are wanting to know what can I do. So I wanted this book to be an answer to them. And each chapter, which focuses on a different aspect of the climate crisis, oceans, forests, jobs, migration, women, etc. Um, each chapter ends with a section called what can I do and it gives people very tangible things that they can do. And at the top of the list is always vote. Make a plan, vote early, do it. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a good message, and I hope everybody hears it. I, I also want to point out you had a very nice uh, a reunion with your uh, co-stars from the film uh, book club. You did a virtual book club where you and Candace Bergen and, uh, and uh, Mary Steenbergen talked about the book. Was, that, uh, was it enjoyable to see um, familiar faces? Oh, I love them so much. That's one of the great things about being an actor. Well, you meet new people all the time. Yes. You, you get to know these people that are so interesting and fun. And, you know, when you're older, though, you have to make a real effort to stay in touch. So last Friday was like a reunion of, of Mary and Kenny. Diane was on her way to Arizona to buy an, another Adobe house to re change it up. She's so good. At <laughs> oh, my God. That Diane and her <laughs> Adobe houses, when will it stop? <laughs> I, know. I, I know, I know. But we are, um, you know, there are over five, uh, five million book clubs in the United States, huge number of book clubs, all women, mostly women. And so what we're saying to them is, if you give me a good reason why I should show up to your book club, I'll, I'll show up. I mean, it's virtual, but I'll send you my book and I'll sign it. And then um, we'll have a discussion. Well, that's a, that's a lovely offer. And I should note as well that the proceeds of this book, 100% of them are going to Greenpeace. Uh, thank you for your generosity with that. It's always such a pleasure to see you, Jane. Uh, keep Thanks. up the great work. Thanks a lot, Seth. Good to see you. Glad you're back on stage. Thank you so much.